Hello, agentpreneurs, and welcome to episode 51 of the Daily List Report. Man, if you missed Friday's episode, we talked about what a gimbal is and why you need to get one today. There's a link in the comments right now to that episode. Make sure you watch that. It's actually been our most popular episode yet, and it's gonna tie in nicely to our conversation today. So I'm gonna bring back a familiar Monday guest, my co-founder and CEO of List Reports, AJ Shaw. AJ, say hello to our agentpreneurs. Hey, agentpreneurs. Hey, Randy. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to see you. Thank you, as always, for taking time to do this. Um, you know, one of the interesting things, AJ, about the videos that you and I do together is the engagement time on them is massive. And so it's a really great opportunity for those agents who are really looking for thought leadership and where the world is headed and all of that uh, to be able to hear your perspective on this. So thank you for doing it. Awesome. Hey, well, why don't you explain what engagement time is and why it's important? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, look, we're here on YouTube. You're watching this on YouTube. And we made a move against Facebook, frankly, right? And so we can talk about that right here. Um, when I talk about engagement, I'm talking about the amount of time that people are viewing these videos, right? I'm talking about mm. not looking at these videos for three seconds, which is what Facebook counts as a view. Um, our engagement time on average on YouTube is almost eight minutes, which is a tremendous amount of time, right? And that includes people who are just bouncing in and bouncing out, right? But most people are watching a significant portion of these videos and that engagement is deeply, that's why we do this, right? We don't do this for the vanity. We don't do this for the big numbers and views and all of that. We do this for the engagement. So that's the one metric that matters most to us. So does that apply? I mean, because a lot of realtors, real estate agents are also trying to do video out there. So how do they think about like a view versus an engagement? Are like all views the same as engagement? Yeah, I mean, these terms are new to us, so. They are new know. to us. Yeah. And I'm, yes. I'm glad you brought that up, AJ, right? Because mm -hmm. one of the things that I'm gonna continue to talk about is we're learning together here, right? Even this whole medium is still relatively new to us. And mm -hmm. so our own thinking has been shaped by our own results. And so, you know, AJ, for me, this is how I look at it. And you can tell me how you look at it. Um, I still see value in Facebook, but I see value in Facebook as a different, in a, in a different way. So as it relates to these videos that you're watching right now, I see that three second exposure, we'll call it, as brand awareness, right? People are seeing my face thousands of times a day as they scroll through the feed. They're like, oh, there's that guy again. And there's the List Reports logo. So they're, they're doing something, they're out there, right? But I look at, at YouTube, as the engagement platform, right? Mm -hmm. And though the views are lower for us on YouTube than they are on Facebook, the quality of those views is so much higher. And when I say so much higher, I'm talking about 16 to 18 X, the performance in terms of engagement time than we get on Facebook. So I look at them as complementary platforms mm -hmm. in that sense. What about you? Well, so, uh no, I, I can see where you come to that conclusion, right? So now there's a question of, we're creating more views on Facebook, but we're creating more knowledge, maybe, or right. brand awareness or true engagement yes. with YouTube. Correct. Okay, and where does Instagram fit into all of that, or LinkedIn? or any yeah. of these other platforms. So in this case, we're talking specifically about video content, right? And so um, one of the things that we're still learning, right, quite frankly, is is where Instagram fits into that. So you can put videos on Instagram, certainly. You can use uh, Instagram TV or IGTV, as people refer to it, for longer format videos. And, you know, our early testing with that hasn't been great yet. We're still figuring out. So the engagement time has also been quite low. I would say that the engagement time on Instagram has been more comparable to Facebook than it has been to YouTube. But I don't want to draw any conclusions yet. It's still mm -hmm. early days for us on Instagram. Well, it'd be interesting. Maybe we can publish something and just, you know, as we're getting data, um, yeah, just publish all that out to our agent entrepreneurs as well, just so that they see what our experiences are, relatively speaking, on these different platforms. You know what? That's a, that's a great idea, AJ. What we'll do is we'll do an episode of this where we actually show our own data and what we've learned. I think that's a great point. And the conclusions that we're drawing and the relative value of each of the platforms. LinkedIn, for example, what we've started doing is putting YouTube links there, right? So promoting the shows on YouTube and using that as a feeder back into YouTube. So, you know, there was a time when we weren't sure, do we just put, drive everything to YouTube? and we tried that and then we lose a lot of the Facebook views and so I think mm -hmm. this sort of bifurcated model where you have brand awareness on Facebook in this case you know deep engagement on YouTube has been a good strategy for us so far okay I see and so um, what is like what are we trying to accomplish with this medium in general and 
how do we think about it in the context of agents? Because your video on Friday was about creating video. That's right. And it was in the context of perhaps in the context of a listing, right? But just in general, how are we thinking about this? And what, are, what is the purpose of it for us? What is the purpose of it for real estate agents? Yeah. So I think, you know, the purpose, the purpose for us, right? And this started, as, as you recall, and as all of you recall, right, in the midst of what was going on right now, which is we need a forum and opportunity to talk to people, talk to our agents, and give them our view of the world, right? Whether that's where the world is heading or that specific tools and technologies and things like that. What we found is that our audience most keenly latches on to really practical tips like, okay, what can I do right now? Give me the, the three things that I need to do today, right? That review, and I actually have it sitting right here. So again, if you didn't watch it and you have no idea what this thing is, right, this is a gimbal. This was a very practical episode. It was like, this thing is 120, 140 bucks. And for that, you get a lot of mileage, you get a lot of legs, you're gonna create better content. And so those, those, those types of content have done very well. I think for us, AJ, right, we're speaking to a broad spectrum of our audience, right? And so in some cases, and that's why we continue to do it, we're talking like this and having an open-ended conversation about where things are headed and what our view of the world is, right? And in other cases, yeah. we're giving very, very tangible, practical tips. And I think that diversity of the content strategy, because for us, AJ, we do this every day, right? I think that that's okay in our case. Mm -hmm. But I have, I have sort of a controversial question as it relates to agents, you know? Uh, I, because I've seen a lot of uh, even some stuff from Tom Ferry where he says, hey, video is everything. You should be on video. He's, he's really been using that uh, message with agents, video, 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 video. Um, how do I say this? People's personalities and their ability to sort of shine on video really vary, right, yes. depending on, on the nature of the person. It could just be their, their willingness to be a part of the medium. And then also there's just some people are going to be better at it for whatever reason than other people. Yeah. I think you, you've turned out to be great in tremendous medium, yeah. right? And I know you were shy about it initially. Yeah. Um, so how do, how do you think about that in the context of just varying personalities? Is this a one size fits all situation or like, how do you think about it? If video is, is one of the better ways to acquire uh, viewers and ultimately uh, clients for agents, how do you think about this uh, in terms of the medium and the fact that so many people are so different and it's so personality dependent? Yeah. So I think I think there's there's a lot in that question, right? And so I don't know if my view on this is controversial or not, but it might be counterintuitive to some people, which is I actually think that anybody can do video. Anybody, introvert, extrovert, young, old, doesn't matter. I think anybody can do video because it's basically, in this case, I'm having a conversation with my phone right now, right? And you by extension through my mm. phone. That's what I'm doing right now. And all of us are capable of having conversations with people. And I think what that also ties to is this idea that I've been pushing a lot on the show, which is your most authentic brand is just being who you are. Mm. And so I think it takes a couple things, right? I think it just takes a little bit of practice. And when I say a little bit of practice, I mean a little bit of practice, right? For those of you listening right now who've never sat in front of a camera and made a video, you'll do it the first time and you'll say what all of our first time guests have said. Man, that really wasn't that hard, right? And then you're gonna get over the awkwardness. Let me tell you something else, AJ. Up until this show, and I've, you know, I've spoken at conferences, I speak in front of the, I have never watched a video of myself speaking. And that's mm -hmm. like, I broke the cardinal rule, right? That's what you're supposed <laughs> to do. You're supposed to watch your own sure. video and critique yourself. And I just could not bring, I'm not kidding, AJ, in 20 years of doing work, right? I have never watched myself. No, I and know, now I, I watch know myself that. all the time. I What's that? that? I know that. Yeah, you know that, right? Yeah, and, uh, and you get used to it real fast. I'm talking, you do two yeah. or three of these things and you're like, okay, that wasn't so hard. Now I'm used to looking at the back of my iPhone right now and talking mm -hmm. and it feels normal and it feels fine. So that's a long-winded answer, AJ. But bottom line is, I actually think it is a one-size-fits-all medium. I think people just don't understand that. Okay, interesting. All right, well, you have a bit than I do, so I'll, I'll, I'll have to take your word for that. Uh, for sure. But I think even within within that context, there's probably certain things that work for certain people and not others. Like you could actually monologue for 10 minutes. I don't think I could do that on video. For me, right. this conversational format is so much more important. Right. Right. But that works. And I can get in front of video and do this with you because, you know, this is the way that works for me. This is what we do. Um, yeah. 
right? And some people are just, I, I think you're dynamic when you're just talking on, on the cusp uh, in front of the, the camera for five or 10 minutes yourself. So it's a fair point, right? So mm -hmm. while I think the format is universal, the approach is not necessarily universal, right? And so to your point, um, the best the best shows that we do is this when we just have a conversation, right? So I think your approach to the content does depend on who you are. Because you're right, some people like Wasal who's been on the show, she could also mm. sit here and just talk for 20 minutes, right? Straight about yeah. whatever's on her mind. No disrespect. Wasal certainly could do that. She yes. certainly <laughs> could. <laughs> um, and that's not appropriate for everybody. You know, what, what all of you watching right now don't see is literally right behind this camera is a monitor that has my notes, right? And so mm. it's not as if, I'm not prepared for these things. It's not as if we don't take some time to outline the talking points. And for some people it's talking points and just bullet points. And for others, it might be a little bit more of a script and you'll get very comfortable with sort of going through and making sure you cover on your most important topics. Mm -hmm. um, AJ, though, one, one more thing real quick. There's one more angle to this that I've been thinking a lot about as, as we produce this show, which is, it's, I call it the, it's a, it's the multiplier effect, right? Mm. So I sort of look at this and I say, okay, at this moment in time, for every hour that I spend doing this, how many hours of engagement or value do we get out in the world? Right, because I'm looking at this mostly from an engagement standpoint right now. And so it's been an important metric for me. And what I would encourage those of you watching, I'm curious to get you to react to this, AJ, to, to think about is the, even the video I put up on Friday for the gimbal. Honestly, mm -hmm. I could have spent 10 more hours reshooting, polishing, labeling, whatever. But I think I got the point across. And what I did there was I also said, hey, I'm not the expert. Here's like three other videos. Go watch their videos. They, they spent 20 hours making their videos and they're amazing. They're way yeah. better than I could do. But I got the point across, which is here's a piece of technology. I think it's affordable. I think the utility on it is super high and you can use it for lots of different reasons and you should be aware of it. Now go make a decision. Does that make sense? So, mm -hmm. so there's some modulation there of the time and effort that you spend in the level of production quality for the result. Oh yeah. So, and by the way, I, I think that's totally true. I've become a lot more fond of just sort of the more authentic videos. Uh, maybe it's the zoom in me because I see so many, you know, mm -hmm. we do these zoom video conference calls and you see the cat walking in the background or the kid yeah. running in or the door slamming behind you or something like that. Um, so I, I'm much more of like, okay, authentic is, is fine. You know, plain and simple is fine. If you're getting the point across and you're sort of transmitting your personality through whatever's going on in your life is, is perfectly fine as well. There's probably a limit to that in terms of what, what's going on in the background. But um, by and large, I, I think it's just go with it. Right. Um, yeah. And I think stylistically, culturally, that type of video format has become much, much more ex uh, acceptable. I think that's true. I think that's true. And, and, you know, one of the things that we were talking about just before the show, right, is that there's a lot of tools uh, available, apps, frankly, that mm -hmm. can also make you look good in the process and that are really simple to use. So, but I think you're yeah. right. I think being authentic, being who you are, having that conversation with your users, getting your point across is the most, is more important than, um, overthinking and dialing in your lighting, right? Look, mm -hmm. I'll be honest, that video on Friday, if you get to the end of that video, I shot the end of it in like, it was getting dark outside and it clearly looks very different, right? Any, mm -hmm. any pro would say, oh, that's a no-no, right? And when I was walking outside, the audio changed. Like any pro would say that's a no-no. And in my estimation, I was like, you know what? But it's good enough to get the message across, right? And I think that overthinking how you produce your content, that sort of, what is it, paralysis analysis, right? Sure. And a lot yeah. of people do that because people love gear. I love gear too. People like this stuff. And it's like, but the lighting isn't quite right. What do I do here? I think just getting out there and making it and getting better at it is the best thing that you can do. That makes, makes perfect sense. So all of this comes to some conclusion, right? In particular... One of the things that we're, we're big fans of this idea for real estate agents is that they used to have MLS listings to themselves. Now I'm talking 10, mm -hmm. 15, 20 years ago, right? Sure. Uh, pre, right. But that was their content. If you think about it, when you were a listing agent, that listing was your content. And in a sense, the open house is your content, right? Mm -hmm. It's your ability to, to basically bring people in. It was a physical form of content, but it was content nonetheless. Yes. But now the open houses they're drying up obviously because of covid and uh you know 
the MLS listings are everywhere. So they're not content for lead generation anymore. So now how do we think about that in the context of this, this medium? Because personally, I feel like our job at list reports is to provide a lot of content that agents can use to do content marketing That's in right. a sense uh, and to create more leads. But a video is probably an ideal way to do that. And they don't technically need list reports to do that, although it would nope. be helpful. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, so I think, you know, there's there's a number of opportunities that we look at, right? So if you think about content creation as an agent, um, there's anything from uh, getting on a live video or a recorded video and talking about what's going on in the market, right? And, you know, all of you are, are to some degree or varying degrees keeping up with the news. And so similar to what we do is just getting on for five or 10 minutes and saying, hey, you know, the FHFA made a change today and here's what's happening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That could take you as long as it took you to read the article, which you should already be reading, and hopping online and making a really quick video. And people like quick, short videos. Um, mm -hmm. All the way to, you know, as you think about maybe not having a listing, your one of your key values as an agent is your understanding of your local market, right? You have spent time and you have invested and you've gone to the, the city council meetings and all of the things that you do has resulted in a wealth of knowledge that, that you have uniquely. And so walking around a neighborhood and talking about the neighborhood, right, and some mm. of the unique characteristics and features is another opportunity. Randy, you know, it's a really good point about the neighborhood. Um, and I know that you're working on some tools with your team mm -hmm. about this, but one observation that we have uh, is that it's really hard to get good, meaningful information about a neighborhood. And by the way, when I'm thinking about real estate agents, particularly on the buy side that I want to work with, uh, list side too, actually, mm -hmm. I want somebody who is a neighborhood expert. So that's right. that's, that's kind of a prime area for content, even if you don't have a listing. You could go create a video about a particular neighborhood and talk about it, showcase it both the facts, the figures, and the feel of that neighborhood, yes. probably capture a lot of that on video and use that for lead generation and for brand awareness, right? Absolutely. I 100% I yeah. agree. And, you know, I, I asked the question of all of you on Friday, uh, and you guys responded in the comments. So I'll ask mm -hmm. you right now, from our perspective, there is a dearth of neighborhood information. And what I mean by that is not the stats and statistics that you can get on any website, but the real heart and soul of a neighborhood. Like, what, what's it like to live here? Are there, is it a tight-knit community? Are there great events? Whatever the things are, there's a level of insight that you have that, that I don't, we don't see that, right, AJ? We don't see this content That's out right. there in mass. And if we're missing something, please let us know. But how do you think about the value of neighborhood information and maybe producing videos to do that? That's I would love I would love to see their answers to that. So so that that's gonna be really interesting. Hey Randy, talking speaking of authentic, I'm down to two percent battery life. <laughs> that's ultimate transparency. That's okay. Yeah. We're at 18 minutes, which is probably uh, time for us to wrap up here. And you're at two percent, so that's no problem. I will I will will address one quick point though, AJ, which yeah. is the idea that this content that you create, whether it's for a listing or for the neighborhood, um, is is something that you can market on an ongoing basis, right? Like right. this content lasts, this content you can reuse. Neighborhood content, I think, is largely evergreen. And even your listing content, your virtual tours and all of that, right? This is this is this builds a library that you are a productive, active agent and shows the frankly, the work that you've done, right? That's exactly right. Uh oh, it's uh this stuff just gets reused over and over again. So you can keep uh, submitting the same content to your to your SOI, publishing on on Facebook, Instagram, advertising, and so on, and it's going to still stay green uh, even as as different eyeballs see it over time. So that's that's a good content library to establish. Absolutely. All right. So for all of you watching, tell tell us about the neighborhood stuff and what your thoughts are on that. Tell us what you're afraid of. What are your fears around content creation? You know, I'm telling you, if you just do it, it'll be easier than you think. I think this is a universal format, even if you don't think it is. Um, AJ will set up a GoFundMe to get you a charger. Um, and I think we'll be set. <laughs> it's, with, it's just with outside of reach, it just based on where I set up. And it went a lot <laughs> so quicker close. than I thought. So I had 18% when we started. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> All right, Age. Hey, thank you so much for joining again on this Monday for episode 51. And we'll talk to you next Monday, okay? Thank you, Randy. Thanks, Agentpreneurs. Always an honor and a pleasure to talk to you. All right. Thanks, Age. We'll talk to you real soon. Okay. okay goodbye.
Goodbye. Um, there you go. That's authentic for you. Battery dying. Um, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. It's a little bit different. It was just a conversation, right? A little bit different format than, than we usually do. But AJ and I like to do this kind of thing. And you got to be a fly on the wall for that. But we want to hear more from you. Again, I think that video is a universal format. I think everyone watching can get on video and make a video, even if you don't think you can. And I think the only thing that you have to do is just try it. I'm telling you, I promise you, it will become easier and easier every time you do it. And the first time you do it, it won't be nearly as hard as you thought. So until tomorrow, we'll see you soon. Thanks. Bye.